Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back to theCUBE here at EMC World 2015 in Las Vegas. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage with two sets here. My name's Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host Steve Chambers. We're with Wikibon, read all our research on wikibon.com. Uh, have a new CUBE guest on for us today, Matt Oostveen, who is the VCE CTO for Asia Pacific region. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure, Welcome. thank you for having me. All right, so, so Matt, you, you, you've had an interesting background. You've sat on our side of the table as an analyst, and, and now you're uh, really a field CTO for VCE. What, what brought you to VCE, and what's your role there? You know, one of the great things about being an analyst is the great visibility that you have of what's happening within the industry. I'd been covering infrastructure for the best part of seven years, and then moved into something of an oversight role where I had a, a broad perspective of, of what was happening. Uh, and it's very rare you see uh, and uh, a company like VC doing what it is doing. It was growing very quickly. Uh, the converged infrastructure market was very new, it was very exciting. Uh, and especially when you compared and contrasted that converged infrastructure market with what the rest of the hardware market was doing. You know, there was a lot of declines. So there was this one gem that really drew me uh, across to the organization. Yeah. So Matt, you know, I often say I've never had a customer that came to me and said, you know what will solve all my problems? Convergence. Convergence is what's holding me back for everything doing it. It's simplicity that they want, uh, there, there's new experience that they want, but here in the States at least, that convergence term has been beaten into us and hyperconvergence is a new buzzword. I'm curious, the customers that you're talking to, what, what's the conversation starter? Is convergence part of their, you know, IT speak out there? Or, you know, what, what, how does the conversation start? You know, I, I find the conversation often starts when a customer looks looks at their own data center and identifies some of the key challenges that they're having with it. And I think there's a lot of commonalities between Australia, a very mature marketplace, and what you see happening in the United States. Customers look at their data centers in Australia and what do they see? They see a whole lot of problems when it comes to silos. Uh, and a lot of them are having some genuine issues when it comes to the operational costs. Uh, there are some organizations that are running very close to the sun when it comes to the amount of OPEX spend that they have, and they need to radically change the approach that they're having. Uh, we look at the operational cost uh, and the amount of expenditure going into keeping these lights running uh, uh, towards keeping the people within the data center operating that infrastructure, and something's got to change. And I think if we have a look at some of the, the intersecting trends at play, the sheer growth that we see in data volume, the numbers of servers that are exploding across data center floor, and sitting on top of that, the amount of virtual machines, that's a big problem. And I think the way that we're architecting the solutions at the moment, the way that we're ar architecting our data centers, it's starting to lose fidelity. It's starting to, to granulate at scale and we need to alter the way that we're approaching that. And that's something that really resonates in the Australian marketplace. So, it's very interesting this morning, we heard a customer on stage talking about how um, they're a VC customer, which is great, but they resisted being a VC customer for some time. They said, well, we didn't want to get locked in. You know, we felt we'd be tied into a platform, so we put it up. But then he said, we added up how much it was costing us to handcraft our own systems, and then we went with VCE. You know, is that a common story you hear? Do, do people resist at first? You know, what, what, what do you see when you talk to customers? People often ask me, what is your biggest competitor? Who is your biggest competitor? And the expectation is that I'm going to nominate a cloud provider, or I'm going to nominate an infrastructure right. provider. I, I would say that the number one competitor we face is internal IT. Yeah. It is doing it yourself. There is a mindset that has been in play for decades now, going back to the 1980s, of the way that we've been integrating our infrastructure, whether it was a mainframe, whether it was a mini computer, or whether it was this x86 uh, uh, world that we're in today. People have been coached and trained to do things a certain way. And there are hallmarks of that. There are ways that we can measure this. There, there's these great pieces of research that we see floating around that show the amount that we spend on our innovation versus the amount that we spend on our, uh, on our operations. And depending on the analyst firm you talk to, it's probably 70, 30, 75, 25, or 80, 20. And for as long as I can remember looking at this, that needle hasn't budged. And the needle hasn't budged because there is that ingrained mindset that we can do things better. I think what the value proposition is from an e a VCE perspective is that we can liberate these technical resources that have been focused on what, what really are menial tasks and have them focused on business outcomes, on 
have them working more closely with the lines of business, something we know is becoming more influential, and therefore having a positive uh, uh, output uh, as to uh, the, the, uh, the, the end state of how an organization wants to operate. And, and you know, I think people who have been aware of VC for some time, you know, I'd say I used to work at VC many years ago, um, they might still think it's just about a V-block. It's just this static block that's unconfigurable, um, doesn't vary. But well, that's not really the case anymore, is it? And I think VC have got an ever-growing range of solutions. And solutions is the word I've heard a lot recently from, from VCE. Um, can you like, maybe tell us a bit about how, you know, the different things you can get from VCE these days and maybe we can get onto the solutions a little bit after that. Okay, okay. So many questions packed in there, Steve. Uh, but look, firstly, I, I think it's fair to say that VCE owns the converged infrastructure market from an end-to-end -end perspective. And, and let's run a really quick taxonomy over the top of what converged infrastructure means. What flavors does it come uh, in? We, we see that block-based architecture that you're talking about, and of course we've made some announcements showing that we're moving into this uh, rack-based, this uh, hyperscale, uh, hyper-converged uh, uh, offering. And of course we've got the, the vSpecs Blue Appliance-based approach as well. But really what we're also talking about is moving to a world that's far more automated and a world where we can start to deconstruct those silos I was just talking about, and a world where we can start to spend a lot less on our operations. Now, in order to do this, what we want to do at VCE is start to layer on top of the foundation that we provide, which is a, a platform or a converged infrastructure, with some of these solutions that you're alluding to. And that's about factory integrating software, things like the vRealize suite, uh, software-defined storage with, uh, with Viper. Uh, as well as, of course, uh, the software-defined networking capabilities that we've got with NSX. But, but doing this in, in a factory-integrated fashion and then layering on top of that uh, more services around enterprise hybrid cloud. But the point is that we're able to now provide customers with a factory integrated service as much as possible so that we can expedite time to value, that we can provide our customers with the fastest possible on-ramp for providing an infrastructure and uh, software and, uh, and, and services solution to solving some of these critical challenges. So, so Matt, I'm, I'm wondering, just follow up on Steve's point here. In the early days, I used to think vBlock, it's only VMware hypervisor. Right. And while every vBlock ships with VMware, as we say, most people have VMware, few people have all VMware. So if I look at a vBlock, I can have other hypervisors on the vBlock. I can also have physical, talk to lots of database customers that aren't doing it, and I look at the vBlock and the new VX rack that you announced, that's one of the core strengths. I understand if customer wants all VMware, and I'm sure as a federation company, you'd love them to buy you know, the full federation solution, but there's that, that choice and flexibility there. So you know, I, I'm, I'm curious, in Australia, are there, is, you know, is VMware just so dominant that they're not doing Microsoft, they're not looking to get KVM, or you know, I don't still have applications Physical? Yeah, so look, I, I, I think I'd, I'm always cautious in, in giving absolute answers, and we don't live in the childish world of absolutes where it's always going to be one particular hypervisor and, and one particular uh, type of technology for a customer. Uh, we need to provide the customer's choice, and we need to open up certain aspects of the platform so that they're better able to run particular workloads, particular applications that are fitting to what their organization is trying to accomplish. So was this always the plan or could some uh, mischievous commentators out there think, well, it's ever since the kind of Cisco, you know, EMC brought VCE more into the, the Federation, as you call this day. Have, have these changes happened since then or has this always been the plan? I, I, I Look, I, I think neither. I think that the plan is always based upon what customers tell us and what the marketplace is doing. We want to architect solutions and we want to give the right type of, of options to the customer base so that they're able to better meet the demand demands and challenges that they're being faced. So it's certainly not predicated upon you know, machinations of, of what's happening between certain organizations. As I said, mischievous, of course not. Right. Um, but you know, VCE, definitely, as you, as you saw the keynotes this week, they're a, what I would call a first class citizen in the Federation. You know, they're not this, this you know, mix of three companies, they're very much a prime part of what EMC is trying to do with the Federation. You can see them, in fact, I've already heard I want to see if you agree with this, that um, people are seeing you as the, I don't know if the, the overload the convergence word, but things are starting to converge around you. So when people say, well, you know, why not put the pivotal suite on VBlock, you know, it, it seems you're kind of like the center of everything. Is that what it feels like now you're in EMC? Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to agree with that statement. I, I like to say to the customers and, and uh, the marketplace out in my region is that what VCE does is we transcend 
the individual elements that are contained within the V-Block. We, we stand above storage, network and compute and we bring that together. What we want to do is have an infrastructure platform that's tuned to the task of the challenges that are being faced by the customers, not just today, but also tomorrow. And I think that's one of the reasons that we are at that center point, that pivot point for what's occurring within the Federation, because it is a fantastic platform to build these more sophisticated deployments upon. I think in a few people, you know, when they've seen the presentations uh, here at EMC World, they've been looking at the V-Blocks, which a lot of people are familiar with, saw so VX Rack, I think a lot of people are interested in that. There's been much debate about which workload goes on which workload, and, and I think the answer was, you know, it's not as black and white as tier one here and tier two there. You know, it could be more complex than that. I think, you know, one of the comments I've heard multiple times from, from some customers here as well, you know, when they look forward, they think, well, which should I buy, a V-Block or a VX Rack? Well, VX Rack is that, will that replace a V-Block? You know, there's that kind of, uh, you know what it's like, as soon as you introduce a new product, people work out where it's going to fit. So, any kind of clarity or guidance on? If, if I listen to a lot of the presentations that have been occurring over the last few days, I, I, I think one of the, the hallmarks has been this discussion around Platform 1, Platform 2, Platform 3, which is an IDC taxonomy for, for viewing how we're moving into this more interconnected world. Essentially, I think what IDC is trying to say with this third platform is that we're trying to smash together supply and demand and, and remove as many roadblocks as possible. And what that means is that we're going to have a lot of microservice applications, a lot of uh, small IT services that are going to interconnect these little uh, pieces of supply and demand that we have. Perhaps a marketing department that wants to better reach the customer base. Perhaps it's a, the finance department that wants to interconnect with a, a taxation uh, office or, or auditors. So there's this whole swathe and, and this whole world of new applications that are going to be written and they need to be built upon a different kind of infrastructure. And I think that describes the, the, the platform three that we're seeing. Um, now, some use cases are going to be really well suited for this new VX rack offering that we have, and some other use cases, more standard, traditional, I suppose that the worlds of the SAP, Oracle, and, and Microsoft packaged uh, application view of the world sits really well within the, the V-Block range. Yeah. So, so, so Matt, I, when I think back to the early days of uh, VCE, the message was kind of the private hybrid cloud and we're going to help you build that, but when you talk to most customers, it was they helped me deploy virtualization easier. Today, we're starting to talk about third platform, I heard microservices there, you know, the data lake and things like that. You know, as, as a technologist and, you know, the CTO in the field talking to customers, you know, where are they in that journey? How are, you know, are, have they, are they embraced and understand, you know, Steve and I would always say, you talk to 10 customers and, you know, they'll tell you that they've got a cloud, but none of those stories match yeah, at all as to yeah. what they've got. So, you know, what, what, what's the conversation you have? And what, what are the new things that you're helping them with? And, what are they really doing today? I, I think we have a tendency in the IT industry to overuse some words, and, and hybrid cloud may be falling into that category. Here's what it means in the field from the discussions that I have with the customers. Uh, it means that uh, essentially customers have on-premises infrastructure, they have off-premises workloads, but the CIO is rather pragmatic. What they want is an environment that is seamless, and they want the ability to be able to maneuver a workload based on the best characteristics for running that workload. Maybe it's cost, maybe it's latency, maybe there are some other characteristics that wrap around that. So what I find the discussion and where the discussion has that from a maturity perspective is one of cold, hard pragmatism. How can you, Mr. VCE, help us enable this type of environment? And how can we better connect with public cloud services, which obviously we want to be able to deploy some types of workloads on, but how do we have that working as a homogenized single system? All right, well Matt, we're going to have to leave it there. Appreciate you digging in, uh, giving us the, uh the non-US uh, perspective on some of this. Uh, we've got a bunch of customers of VCs coming on next. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back after this quick break.